We've done a really good job so far of building out the footer exactly how we wanted it. Hopefully this is starting to really illustrate the concepts behind the grid system and the power that it enables us to have over the layout and look of our application. It's definitely okay if you don't feel like an expert on it yet or if it's still a little confusing because it's going to become much more clear as we continue working with it. But hopefully it's at least illustrated the concepts. We can do a better job with our code for it though, so let's go on over to the code editor and see how we can clean that up. I'm here in the code editor at footer.js and if we take a look at our footer, we actually are going to see a lot of repeated code. So we have our grid item container direction column here with the classes of link column and then we have an item, the first one is a variant of h5 and then we have items that are variant of body ones both with the classes of body one for our classes.link. If we scroll down here we'll see that this same exact pattern is actually happening for all of our different grid columns here or link columns rather. So since the same code is happening for all of this, and if we scroll down to our social media icons here, it should be really obvious that we just have a grid item wrapping our image. And that's the same for all of these, except for Twitter, which has our spacer on it. But that's a small enough detail that we should pretty easily be able to make this all much more programmatic and concise. The social media icons will be a little simpler, so let's go ahead and start there. Let's scroll on up to the top of our function and underneath our const of classes, let's create a const of social media. And we'll set this equal to an array of objects. We'll create an object for each of the icons that we want. So we'll give it an icon property, the Facebook, or that's a lowercase, Facebook icon that we have imported. And then we'll set the alt equal to the string Facebook. And we'll go ahead and create another object the icon of Twitter, an alt of the string Twitter, and then another object with an icon of Instagram and an alt property of the string Instagram. Let's also go ahead and give these a link property. So this will be a link to https colon slash slash facebook.com. I'll just go ahead and leave just the generic top level domains for each of these since I don't have a fake account set up for this fake clothing brand that we're building. So let's create link https colon slash slash. Oh, make sure I get only two T's slash slash twitter.com and a link of Instagram.com. All right. Now let's also come up to the top here and let's import an icon button from at material dash UI slash core slash icon button. And just like we saw in the header, instead of putting our on click directly on the image, we'll use the icon button for accessibility reasons so that the page actually knows that this is a button, not just a regular image. Let's go ahead. Now we can scroll down to the bottom here and we'll go ahead and delete. We'll go ahead and delete two these bottom two grid items and we'll just leave the one for Facebook and use this as our template. So I'll go ahead and now cut this last one out and we'll instead inject some JavaScript. Here we'll take the social media constant that we just created which is an array of objects. So since it's an array we can dot map over it and that's going to give us each platform that we have inside. For each of these let's open up the arrow function and we'll just use parentheses to automatically return and we'll return this grid. Let's go ahead and we'll also now wrap the image with an icon button component. Make sure to wrap that and get the closing tag. And now we can give our icon button an on click equal to the platform which represents our object and it'll be our platform dot link. All right. So platform dot link. And actually that's not going to be an on click. We're going to want to make sure to turn this into an actual link. So we'll need to use the component prop, but we're not going to be making a component equal to the link component because this link component from Gatsby is just for internal links. 
so just to links on other pages of our site that Gatsby would know about. If we're using external links like facebook.com or some other website that we're linking to, we can't use the link component from Gatsby. All right, so we'll just want to make it a regular link tag, which is the A tag. And we can do this with the component prop, just like we can pass regular React components into there. We can also pass HTML elements by using a string. So we'll pass the string of A. Actually, it means we don't even need those braces. So we'll make this an A tag. And that means instead of the to prop for our links, this will expect the herif prop. All right, and now this will become a regular link taking us to each of the individual platforms. Then we need to make sure to change our source to the platform dot icon and change our alt to the platform platform dot alt. Let's go ahead and save this and flip back on over and we can see that we still have exactly what we would expect. Now you may have noticed that we didn't have to add the spacer class and they're still spaced out a little bit and that's thanks to our icon button. The icon buttons add a little bit of padding here and so that spaces it out for us and I think that looks just fine so we won't even need to worry about that extra spacer class we were using before. So let's actually go up to our style object and we can just get rid of the spacer class. All right, so that cleans our code up even more. Now if we save this, you may have noticed just then that when we hover over this, we get a little background appearing, a little darkness outlining the icons. And for the Facebook icon, it's kind of this ellipse, it's this oblong circle instead of the perfect circles of the other icons because of the shape of the Facebook icon itself. So I really don't want to mess with the sizes of the icons, I think they look fine, but because of the shape of the Facebook icon, I don't really like how that looks. So we can actually disable that. If we go ahead and let's give our icon button the classes prop, and we'll specify the root class of the icon button, and let's override it with a classes.icon class. And we can go up, and in our style object, let's create our icon class, make sure to get the comma, and here we can get rid of that background on hover by first specifying the hover style for this class, which we can do if we use quotes, and then this is JSS syntax, we'll use the ampersand and then colon hover. And what this means is the ampersand just means this class, the class that I'm working with currently. Okay, so this is just how you add hover styles to your classes in JSS. So we'll go ahead and add our hover style. We'll go ahead and then set the background color to be transparent. And that will overwrite that opacity that's currently being applied. Let's go ahead and save that, flip back on over to the browser, and now when we hover over the icons, you don't see any background. There's a small caveat with this though, because if we click on the icons, we actually do still see that background appear. If we click on Facebook, it's got weird borders. It doesn't look the same as the rest, so let's go ahead and remove that as well. But that one we can do even easier if we scroll down to our icon button, and we can add the prop, disable ripple. That ripple effect is actually what's being caused when we click on the icon button. So we can use disable ripple, both on icon buttons and on the regular button component to get rid of that effect. So if we go ahead and save that and then flip back on over, you see that even if we click on it, now we're no longer receiving those styles, but we're still getting the click pointer. And if I go ahead and click on these or open them in a new tab, it takes me over to Instagram, and this one takes us over to Twitter and Facebook. All right, so we just got our social media icons nice and programmatically created.